Hi guys, so at the end of all my videos, I always say leave comments and let me know what you want me to make in the future. And well, that's what happened in one of my recent videos. And someone asked me to make this, the A-Team Wagon. And obviously it's got to go with the Orcs because, well, I love Orcs. So that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video is show how to make or how I made a Orc um, A-Team Van. But rather than just making the van out of uh, sort of sheets of plastic or even some cardboard, I thought I'd have a go at making it out of sprues. Something I've, uh, I've not done for quite a while now. Um, if you are new to the channel, um, I have made a lot of things with sprues. Um, but obviously if you are an old regular, then yeah, you'll know all the bits and pieces and all the variety of vehicles and, well, terrain, all kinds of stuff I've made. So the first thing we do is we get our sprues and we cut off the nibbly knobbly bits as, well, we don't want the nibbly knobbly bits. Um, so yes, yeah, so I normally cut around the edge of the uh, these sprues, just because obviously then you can get the nice long sort of sprue bits. And um, with every build I do with sprues, I always like to make a framework, um, something that I can obviously make the uh, the sprue panels and other bits and pieces sort of stick to. And this way, obviously, whatever I make, it's nice and light because it is a framework and not obviously well solid. So I've picked uh, this picture, and this is obviously the rough size that I want it. And now it's a case of getting the sprues and gluing them together. But just so I don't glue them down onto my desk or even a bit of paper, I've got this greaseproof paper, uh, which is great because obviously things don't stick to it. That being said, as you can see, I have obviously just glued it down to the sheet of paper underneath. <laughs> but hey-ho. So yeah, it's a simple little case. Um, so frameworks, sprues are awesome for making frameworks. So if nothing else, you can make simple frameworks for any of your sort of like wargaming terrain pieces. Uh, but see, in this case, making the framework uh, makes things a lot easier for me to sort of build this this vehicle. As I will be making some um, some sprue panels. If you're new to the, say sprue sort of builds, uh, don't worry. I will show you how I make sprue panels a little bit later. Uh, but for now, yeah, it's just a case of building up the framework. And whenever I make things, I like making the frameworks very very sturdy, just so if you did pick this up, it wouldn't sort of crumble or buckle. And again, if you are new, you may or may not have seen or heard that I have made a Tau Manta solely out of sprues. Uh, there's a video somewhere, guys, if you want to go and check that out. It's quite a big build, um, as in the time it took. And obviously, the actual size of the Tau Manta is absolutely huge. And I, I built it to scale. Um, so yeah, that took a lot of sprues. So yeah, back to this. I say it is a case of obviously building up. I'm just using some normal sort of glue here. I could use the, uh, the cement glue that I use to uh, glue the figures together as obviously, well, this is obviously the plastic sprues. So yeah, the cement glue would work. Uh, but I like to use super glue just because, well, it's a bit quicker. Um, and rather than trying to hold on to a piece for sort of like, I don't know, five minutes, 10 minutes, uh, at least this way, I can just push it down and hopefully it'll glue to its um, to the other bit I'm sort of gluing it to rather than my fingers. It didn't take too long to build, and I actually did this, uh, well, during a live stream. Um, so, yes, yeah, so that was quite fun. People could actually see it sort of in real time. And then, yeah, obviously cutting out the side panel there, just because I'm going to have the uh, the door sliding open, as I am going to have, obviously, the uh, the A-Team equivalent uh, in Orcs in this. So I want two guys sitting in the, uh, the driver and passenger seat, one guy hanging out the back, and then one guy tied to the front. So here we go, guys. If you are new to the channel and you've never seen sprue goo, this is sprue goo. Uh, simply, it's the sprues put into a jar of acetone um, and then left overnight. And yeah, turns into this stuff. And then to make panels from it, as you can see, I get a big dollop out, put it in between two pieces of grease poof paper and then just flatten it out with a rolling pin. And yeah, simple as that. And there is a case of leaving it to dry. Again, leaving it overnight. Uh, typically at least seven, eight hours, if not a bit more. But um, yeah, make up several panels, leave them, and then they're all ready to use later on. So this brew goo can be left in the jar for quite some time, which is why generally whenever I use it all up, like I have now making all these panels, I then go and make some more. So here we go, starting again with the jar full of acetone. And here's all the lovely sprues. And then yeah, it's simply a case of cutting them up. Um, you can cut them into real, real small pieces if you want as obviously they will, will dissolve a lot quicker. Uh, but as I generally just sort of cut these up and then leave them overnight, um, the only requirement I have is I need to cut them up so they're small enough to fit in whatever sort of jar I've got them, as in the, the top. 
Um, so the jars I've got, these nice sort of big wide ones, uh, which makes it nice and easy to obviously get the sprues in, as well as getting the, uh, the sprue goo out when I want to come to use it. And yeah, so you fill up the jar good halfway with acetone. And then what I normally do is get the, uh, the sprues that I've cut up and put them in so they're right to the top. And this is what they look like after a few hours. So as you can see, yeah, starting to dissolve. Uh, but say typically it's at least seven, eight hours till you can actually use them. And then they look like this, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to be using this a little bit later as the other thing I want to make is some tyres. And so these are a couple of tyres that I've got off an old Orc vehicle. Uh, but I only got the two, and obviously I need four. Uh, plus I also want to make these out of sprues, just so that everything for this build would be sprues. And to do that, it's simply a case of making a, uh, a rubber mould. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So I've got my two wheels, and I've got my... Well, this isn't quite Lego, guys. So if you're into Lego, don't fear. This is just Lego knockoff stuff. Uh, but this is a great thing to use as the... Uh, well, to make a mould with as it's um, easy to sort of pull apart afterwards. And then, yep, yeah, simply a case of using a Lego or Lego parts, bits, whatever, uh, to build up a frame around the, uh, obviously, the object you want to make a, uh, a mold of. So, yeah, do that. And then I normally put some plasticine at the bottom, just because this is a nice, quick, easy way of making the, uh, the floor nice and smooth. And, yeah, it's a simple case of obviously pushing it around, trying to flatten it out, get it into all the corners, and the idea is to make this nice and level. And then the tyres can be pushed into it so they obviously then don't move. And then, yeah, it's simply a case of building up the uh, the rest of the framework around it. Just so obviously it's nice and high. Uh, well, obviously definitely higher than the top of the uh, the wheels. And generally when I make sort of silicone uh, moulds or rubber moulds, I like to have it so it's at least sort of 5 mil all around. Um, so, yes, that's why I'm definitely going to go up another le level just to make sure... There's, uh, yeah, there's plenty of uh, rubber around it. And that's that all done. And now it's ready for the uh, the fun bit, which sometimes can be the messy bit. And that's making up, obviously, the, uh, well, mixing the right ratio of these um, oh, silicone rubber mould sort of stuff. Um, this is, <laughs> funny enough, I've actually had this stuff, well, nearly two years. So I wasn't at all too sure whether it would still work or not. Uh, because, obviously, these ones have been opened, have been used. But uh, fortunately, uh, for me, they do still work. And obviously these ones are mixed in a ratio of 10 to 1. Uh, obviously there's a whole variety of ones out there, and I've used ones in the past uh, that have been mixed on a ratio of 1 to 1, which is obviously nice and easy. And I have had ones that were all like 20 to 1, which started getting a little bit more complicated on the old math side. So yeah, mix them in together. Um, and the fact I like about this one is that they are sort of different colours, as in the, uh, the red and the, the white. So when you mix them, it's easy to see when it's fully mixed because obviously it's a nice sort of pink consistency. Again, I have had some that have been a similar colour. Uh, and they're just a right pain because you don't literally have to sort of just keep mixing and mixing. And then when you think you've done enough, do it again, double the time, just to make sure. But um, yeah, so that's that all mixed up. And then just pouring it in. Um, you can't quite see, but I've got this really high up. As the idea here is to get a nice thin stream as... Well, from what I've learned and been told and seen and my own experience, the uh, the thinner the stream, the less chance you get air bubbles trapped in. And as I don't really do a lot of this sort of stuff, I don't have one of those nice flashy air chambers. As you can see, what I do is I tap my desk like a nutter. And this sort of generally makes all the air bubbles rise to the top. Uh, not always, but generally. But again, because I'm making something for orcs, it doesn't have to be sort of 100% neat, precise, uh, and perfect, although this does come out pretty good. Um, yes, yeah, so as you can see, there's a few air bubbles at the top there, which obviously then becomes the bottom, but that's totally fine. And again, this is why using the uh, the Lego is so nice and easy because it just, just comes off nice and clean and obviously can be reused to make more frames for, for other bits and pieces. So, yeah, the wheels come out nice and easy, and as you can see, yeah, lots of low definition in there, which is pretty cool. So I'll give the old uh, mould a little bit of a clean, uh, get rid of obviously the plastine bits on it. And then, yeah, it's simply a case of getting my sprue goo and sort of letting it fall in. So the one thing with the sprue goo, though, guys, as soon as it comes out of the acetone, uh, the acetone is evaporating straight away. So this stuff, so even though it takes seven, eight hours to sort of fully harden, as soon as it comes out, it does start getting a skin over it. So when you are putting this in moulds, you do have to be pretty fast and pretty quick 
otherwise it won't sort of go into all the little nooks and crannies. Um, so yeah, so obviously depending on what kind of mould you've got and how much definition you've got in there, sprue goo can be used for some bits and pieces, uh, but yeah, you can't do anything too detailed or too intricate. So this is the first ones that came out, and these are still a little bit on the soft side. Um, yeah, so this is where sometimes I get a bit impatient because it does take, so it normally takes about seven, eight hours for this stuff to dry. Uh, because obviously it's inside a mould, the bit on the inside does take longer. So yeah, I had to leave them for about 12 hours. So this was the first ones I did, and yeah, not too bad. But as you can see, they do lose or have lost quite a bit of the definition. So I made another set of two. Um, again, obviously leaving them another 12 hours. And yeah, these ones came out a lot better. Um, still missing some of the definition from the original one. But um, considering they're made from sprues, yeah, not too bad at all. And then obviously made another set of two. So this is obviously where making things with sprues is quite time consuming. Because each set of two wheels took 12 hours to make. And then yeah, so I've got the framework all done. And now the panels are pretty much dried. These have been left for a good day and a bit. And the great thing with these panels, and that is it's simple to cut them. You can cut them obviously with scissors like I am. Or with a scalpel or well, with anything really. So rolling the panels out makes them relatively sort of smooth and thin. Uh, but if you want to make them extra smooth and, well, extra thin, then, yeah, use one of these little uh, pasta roller mangle maker thingies. And, yeah, just keep passing it through. Um, obviously, it's got an adjustable thing on the side, so you can make it thinner and thinner and thinner. Uh, and that's exactly what I'm doing here. And the main reason for this is, as I say, it sort of it squeezes out any possible air bubbles that might be trapped within the, um, the sprue panels. And, yeah, it makes them a bit thinner and generally a little bit smoother as well. So I was getting ready to um, to put the panels on the vehicle, uh, but I kept looking at the vehicle and I kept thinking it looked a bit too wide. Um, so yeah, so sometimes when you are building things and if you're not happy with it, you're better off changing it rather than carrying on. And that's exactly what I did here. I mean, I literally took out about 10 millimeters, if, if that. Uh, but I think it made all the difference because then when I did put it back together again, I was much happier with the whole overall size of it. And the fact this is all going to get clad in the sprue panels, um, you're not really going to see any of this framework or the fact that it has been cut and shunted and whatever. So yeah, there we go. And now it's ready for some paneling. And again, this is what I did as a live stream. So anyone who joined me there would have seen this uh, in real time. I do try and do live streams every now and then. Um, it kind of all depends on really well how busy I am with, well, general life, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you want to see more live streams, let me know in the comments, guys. Um, if there are lots of people who want to see it, then yeah, I'll, I'll do more more live streams. Um, and obviously, any particular time that you guys prefer, uh, leave that in the comments as well. As guys, yeah, I do read all the comments and say this build uh, was suggested by one of the um, one of one of, one of one of you lovely people. Uh, unfortunately, I've got a memory like a sieve, and I haven't got it written down, so I can't sort of mention the person who um, suggested making this. Because, yeah, my memory is absolutely pants. So, again, with the, uh, the gluing of this, this could be glued with the cement glue. Uh, but just for speed, ease, and all the rest of it, I do like to use good old uh, super glue. And, yeah, it is simply a case of going around cladding this thing uh, with the panels, which is pretty cool. And this is kind of where it's up to you just how neat and precise you want to be. Uh, whenever I make things with orcs, I kind of eyeball everything. Uh, but if you're making something a bit more sort of sleek and, well, needs to be neater and tidier, then obviously all these kind of things you would sort of mark uh, and measure. Um, yeah, measure twice, cut once. Whereas when I make things for orcs, it's a case of, yeah, let's wing it, cut it, and then just slap it on. Um, and yeah, fingers crossed, it'll work. So as you can see, obviously I'm covering up the wheel arches just because it's easier to put the panel on as is. Uh, and then later on, I will go round and cut out the wheel arches. But say for, for ease at the time of putting these things on, yeah, just put them straight on. So it didn't take too long to cover the whole thing. As you can see, I need to cut out the wheel arches. And there's a lot of gaps, obviously, well, all over the place. Uh, and that is obviously because I have uh, didn't measure anything. I did just sort of cut and then glue bits on. Uh, but as you'll see in a minute, I will, uh, I will cover up all those gaps and make it look... Uh, well, a whole lot better than it does right now. Um, yeah, it's a bit tricky trying to cut these things out. Um, say, with a scalpel, in a straight line, it's easy to cut. 
We're trying to cut this curved bit out. Uh, did kind of prove difficult, and I kind of found out it was a lot easier to use my little snips and then just go around and snip away. And then once that was done, then it was easy enough just to tidy that up uh, with the scalpel afterwards, which is pretty cool. So yeah, it's a case of it. it's fairly soft this stuff, but depending on how how thick it is, it can be a little bit tricky to uh, well to cut sort of nice and neat. And then yeah, it did that to all the bits, and yeah, it doesn't look too bad. So this is the other good thing with sprue goo, guys. I mean, a lot of you guys might do this anyway, uh, but sprue goo is a great filler. Uh, as much as obviously I make all kinds of things with it, uh, this is something that it's uh, yeah definitely good for. Because obviously it's kind of like a glue as well. Because I'm using it to fill in all the gaps. Um, usual thing. Leave it a good 7-8 hours or more. And then you can just sand it down. Because it'll harden up and go back to well, being a plastic. So yeah, it can be sanded, smoothed, drilled. Uh, you use a, a knife to sort of cut it again. All that kind of stuff. And yeah, it can, uh, it can make all these imperfections suddenly disappear. Uh, and there you go. So I was actually going to give this, like I say, a good old sanding. Uh, and then I kind of thought, nah, it's made for orcs. I'm going to leave it rough and ready. So yeah, this vehicle could have been a lot smoother, uh, but I kind of chose not to. And then good old orcs. Uh, these are all from my bits box, so I couldn't tell you what sort of set they're from, whether they're knobs or, or whatever. Um, they are just orcs from my bits box uh, that I try to sort of make them look kind of how I've wanted them to look for the um, the A-teams or the equivalent people. So this dude, obviously B.A. Baracus, just because he's the biggest one there. Um, obviously using the old third-party heads, and because this one's got a nice Mohegan, so he's going to look good for that. Uh, this one's going to be the guy on the front, uh, Murdoch, I think he's called, the old um, the pilot. So he's going to be stuck on the, uh, on the front. Uh, there's obviously going to be Face. Uh, and then the boss, I always forget the boss is one. Uh, but the head I've got for the boss, uh, the, the dude has got a uh, big cigar in his mouth, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, there we go. Bumpers are on. There's a few. Obviously, you need to put a few panels on. Because, uh, obviously, this is going to be an, like an orc vehicle. So, it couldn't be too neat. So, a few little panels here and there. And all my little figures all ready to go. And I think we kind of know what painting sort of style I'm going to go for. And there we go. Good old slap chop. So, yeah, everything primed in black. Kind of makes it a bit difficult to see on the screen sometimes, especially because the fact my mat is black as well, even with the stripes. And yeah, good old dry brush. Um, I do get a lot of questions asking which grey do I use. And I have to admit, I use the grey that I've got. Um, it's not like purposely used. It's just a case of it's, it's, it's a grey I've got. Um, yeah, so with a grey, I wouldn't go too light. I wouldn't go too dark. <laughs> I would go somewhere in the mi middle with your grey. Because uh, just just then it makes a I think a, a, a nicer sort of like highlight difference. Um, I don't know. It's, it's still got to say try and get out in words what I'm saying here. So you got the obviously the black, the grey, and then the white, and there's a nice sort of gap between the black to the grey and then the grey to the white. Um, I hope that makes sense because I'm going to leave this bit of waffle in. I was going to change it and say something else. Uh, but I would have just said the same. But there you go. So yeah, that's them now. Um, Dry brushed grey and the uh, the white and yeah I I love how the things look I would say I'd quite happily just paint all my figures and leave them in this kind of grey scale just because I love it and I think also because I'm a photographer I love black and white pictures I just think you look more into a black and white picture than a coloured one and of course obviously because this is going to be uh, B A Baracus uh, I want to make his colour different from the rest of the team and that's why the paint I'm using. It's actually a grey paint, but it comes out sort of bluish grey, which I really like. So I kind of know that it's going to come out like that. Uh, and that's why I purposely chose this. Because I was thinking about just painting in blue. Uh, but then I thought, no, if, I have painted some things blue before, and they do look like Smurfs. So, yeah, I think painting them in the grey that's got a hint of blue is, is the way to go. So, yeah, the other dudes uh, just getting painted in the green that I kind of use for well, most of my orcs now. As this is just the green that I like. And yeah, obviously a very simple painting style, this guys. Um, I know you'd have seen it a lot on my channel. I kind of apologize, but I don't. Um, so yeah, Slap Chop. It's been a game changer for me because I just love painting miniatures. So yeah. Um, yeah, and then obviously the 18 van, it's got a um, mostly black. So I wasn't going to do the Slap Chop with this. 
Uh, primed it in black, mainly because, well, half the van is black. So that kind of made sense doing it that way. Uh, obviously, it's got this little red sort of go faster stripe going down it. And I thought, well, to get a nice straight, a nice even line, I can use my uh, my acrylic pen. Um, cool pens. These again, I've had these for a couple of years. Very barely use them, or rarely even. Um, but yeah, these are just obviously nice and easy and quick to do the lines, and then I can just fill that in with uh, well, with some paint. Or I could have um, just sort of drawn in with the pen, uh, but uh, no, use the paint instead. So I have just noticed how long this video is. Um, so apologies there, guys. I generally like to have my videos around the sort of 8 to 14 minute mark. Uh, but this one, yeah, it's gone on a bit, bit, bit longer than that. So if you're still here, uh, well, yeah, you deserve a medal. And if you are still here, guys, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Because I do know, well, a vast majority of people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. And I know it might not mean much to you. But um, yeah, getting more subscribers means a lot to me. So I would love for you to subscribe, obviously, if you enjoy what I do. But then if you're still here after 20 odd minutes, um, yeah, you're, you're either falling asleep or you do like what I do. So yeah, simply painting the rest of the other uh, vehicle and the figures. And while I can carry on doing that, don't forget to leave comments, guys. Let me know what you, uh, what you want to make or want to see me make next even. Um, because yeah, I say I, I do have quite a lot of sort of projects on the go. Uh, but I like to have quite a lot of things on the go because sometimes, well, when one's drying or if I'm making these out of sprues and I'm waiting for the, the sprues to turn into goo, um, there's a lot of waiting around time, which is why I generally have a good three or four projects on the go. So yeah, let me know, guys, what you'd uh, like to see me make make next. Or even with the painting, it's like, obviously I love painting miniatures now. If there's any sort of particular type of uh, miniature you want to see me paint, just to sort of see how, well, see if the slap chop method does work for everything, which I kind of think it does. Um, certainly everything that I've painted has uh, has been slap chopped and yeah, absolutely loving it. And then once they were all done, I put the old, uh, the good old wash over anything that wasn't a speed paint or contrast paint. And yeah, that was them all done. So not too bad at all. Um, I had a little bit of problem getting the suckers off the bases. Normally, I obviously get the scalpel, cut the um, obviously between their feet and the base, and then generally just shoot off really nicely. Uh, I don't know if you saw it just then, but his actual arm just shot off. Um, and yeah, I, I had a right old mare. I think one of the figures, uh, his foot didn't come off. Uh, another dude lost his arm as well. So yeah, not too sure why, but for some reason these dudes, yeah, had a right old struggle. But um, got them off eventually glued the bits back that sort of popped off and then yeah last thing to do just glue them in place so guys what I'm sort of saying with quite a few of the builds that I am now making um, anything that I don't have to use or play with so anything basically it's not kill team uh, I am going to be giving away uh, but I'm going to be giving away things on my patron page so if you want to win something that I've, I've built uh, you need to be a patron uh, that is the only requirement because once a month I'm going to do a random draw uh, and whoever wins, they get to choose, well, whatever it is that I've got a list of that they can have. If that makes sense. Anyway, cheers guys for watching. Uh, so this is how it looks in the end. I'm really pleased with how it all came out. So I did change the position of one of the figures. Uh, just thought it would be funny how them sort of like coming out the front windscreen rather than the side. Uh, but yeah, overall, really pleased with how this has come out. It's a fun little vehicle. I say I will be giving this away, guys. Um, once a month. Uh, one of my patrons does get the chance of well winning something that I've built that month and this is definitely something I'll be giving away so yeah big shout out and thank you to the, my current patrons uh, for helping support the channel as well as my sponsors Easy Roller Dice and Any Cubic so yeah guys link at the end and link in the description if you want to become a patron help support the channel and well and if you want to win something that I've built yeah okay guys like share subscribe all that fun stuff and I'll see you in the next one bye for now